talking a little bit about how the factors or the um, the elements that you have to make sure you have planned for as you build out your operations. The first, obviously, is capacity. How big your operation needs to be. How much, how large your store needs to be. How large your refrigerator needs to be. Um, essentially, you have to make sure that you have you build out your facility so that you can handle the demand over a period of time that hits you and that you can produce the kinds of outputs and the, what's necessary in order to provide the goods and services that are expected of you. Right? That's what you're trying to do from a capacity perspective. What that means is you have to forecast how many customers you're going to have. You have to forecast how much uh, inventory you might have to have on hand. You have to forecast how much equipment you need, the size of your store, if it's a retail outlet or like if it's a subway, how big to make the subway, how many people to have on hand, um, how many people behind the counter, the counter, those sorts of things are all ideas of capacity. In order to do that, you have to understand how much traffic you're likely to have, how many customers, what your demand is likely to be, as well as how your demand might vary over time, how it might be in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, so that in general, you have enough food there so that it, it, it gives the, the uh, customer the sense, if you're talking about this subway example, it tells, us, it tells the customer you have, they have plenty to choose from and it's all fresh, but you do want it to be fresh, so you have to make sure that the uh, material isn't, you know, is, you don't put too much out there so you have a lot of spoilage. And of course, then the number of employees, you don't want a really long, long line. Um, at the same time, you don't want a whole bunch of employees just standing around doing nothing. So that's the notion of capacity. And that varies because as your business succeeds into the next year, the following year, you might have to grow. You might actually have to build a second uh, store somewhere to manage all of the demand that you have managed to generate with your business going forward. That means you have to figure out where you're going to be located. Where is your facility? Now, we're talking about a fast food restaurant, so that would be retail. But if you're, doing, if you're manufacturing and distributing some product or service, let's say you make... Um, some sort of a part, uh, 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 something that people use in their automobiles. Like I see these advertisements for this thing that you put on the dashboard that holds your phone that they sell. Say you invent something like that and you're building a business around it. You have to manufacture, you have to figure out where to put that. But you also might have to have warehouses because you're going to be shipping from different places around the country. So you have to decide where you want to put the warehouses. You have to decide on where you're going to locate your partners. You know, if you're going to distribute through somebody else, they need to be able to get to it, all of those sorts of things. And of course, real estate costs different amounts of money depending upon where you're located. So you have to plan for the cost of buying the real estate and locating a facility in a particular place with a particular size, how much that costs versus the transportation costs of shipping your good or your service around. Um, to get it to the customers that need it or to the to the um, wholesalers to distribute it or however it is that you're doing doing your business. So those are some of the ideas. You have to figure out how much you need. Then you have to locate your facilities closer to customers. That might be more expensive, further away. Then you might have to have some transportation and those kinds of, um, of issues as well. There's a different way that people lay out their, um, their equipment depending upon what the nature of their business is. Um, Generally, when you're doing this kind of operations, expansion, operations, capacity planning, facilities planning, um, you'll get in, you know builders, architects, whatever involved, and they'll have they'll use the same language. Like a fixed position layout basically means you take your business to where you're doing your work. If you're a developer, you're building a, a say a strip shopping center somewhere. Um, you'll have an operations location there, usually a trailer or something like that, where you have all the plans laid out. The people come there um, as the time, um, as uh, different parts, you go through various phases of the construction, uh, the excavation and the initial building, the foundations and all of that. You go through all that process. Um, if you're a builder, whatever, um, you will bring all that together. That's typically called a project organization where you run pretty much everything out of one spot and it might vary over time what you're actually doing in the course of that sort of a project. Drilling for oil is another one of those examples, a fracking location. Uh, we hear a lot about that from natural gas perspective. Then there's the process layout, which means that you 
you set up different locations for different parts of the process. Uh, fast food is an example of this in some, in some situations uh, where you might have where people do the cooking in the morning, like they cook the bread in the morning, um, they have a person, a, a situation for doing that in, per, in some area in the kitchen in the back, and then they might have uh, an area where they greet customers and they deal with that in a certain situation with a certain process, and there's handoff from one to another. Um, this is um, where you, you, the events change to some degree over the course of time or the course of what is being delivered, um, and you organize slightly different, and so that things are done in, in stages and steps in this sort of process perspective. Um, some people call this sort of thing an intermittent organization, and that they're focusing on different things at different times. And that's another way that you might think about laying out your process. And these are just, there's like a, almost a continuum among these, but people come up with these various names that they use to describe these kind of businesses. Um, a product location, a product layout is where you essentially build the same product over and over again. You might have shifts. Somebody comes in, they do their, their piece of it, and they build the product, and, they, and somebody else builds the product, and the process goes on along something like an assembly line. I do my part, someone does their part, and you're always doing the same thing, and the whole process is called continuous manufacturing. Continues to go on, and the supplies show up, and trucks come, and people unload them, and all the parts get put together, and at the other end comes the end product. Um, that's if you have high volume, you're trying to minimize your cost, and you have the demand to support that. Um, that's the one way to optimize your capacity. A product layout, if you're making the same thing all the time, even a little bit of, of customization, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, when you do those kinds of things, you, uh, you typically have what's called this product layout or continuous manufacturing. To do these things, there are technologies that are greatly supportive of this. One is called um, computer-assisted design, where you can go and design the product using a computer terminal and, and, and graphics. And that way, you then the, this computer can inform the machinery of exactly how you want to have the cuts or the, uh, the, the tolerances of some of your parts. And computer-assisted manufacturing is really taking this idea forward where you can do design on the equipment, but the way that the, the equipment that's making the product is actually set is determined by the computer through this uh, computer-assisted process where you do the design and everything online. You say what you're going to do, what the parts are uh, that you need over the course of the day, and the computer actually can adjust the technology or the, the equipment to make sure the product comes out at the end. If you think about it, um, the idea of 3D printers that are coming out for prototyping products is, is just the next step. It's like this computer-assisted manufacturing idea on steroids, in a sense. It does, can do exactly what you want to build it as a printer. But even before that, the uh, computers can change the way the equipment works to make specific products. And that's this idea of flexible manufacturing. Um, more and more, technology becomes a greater and greater part of how products and services are created, and the manufacturing equipment can be changed. So in an assembly line of certain uh, really advanced assembly lines, mostly the Japanese automobile factories, for example, not so much the older American factories, but the Japanese factories and some of the more the newer American factories and German factories in the U.S., um, you could actually have different cars. You might have a Lexus right in line right ahead of a Camry going through the same line in a, in a uh, Toyota factory. Um, the reason being the computers are actually changing what's being made and telling the people that are working there and the robots to make a product. This one's a Lexus, this one's a Camry, and it resets some of the equipment to make things that you, that you want to do. And that whole process is... The system, when that's all set uh, with robotics and everything, um, is called computer integrated manufacturing. And these are what people mean when they say manufacturing uh, needs higher technology skills than it used to need. Um, only, only maybe 10 or 15 years ago, people were still doing a lot of things, nuts and bolts, with their own tools, human beings. Um, now, more than ever, more and more, it's done with robots and with. Um, uh, technology in this computer integrated manufacturing kind of environment. Also increasingly people want to design for sustainability, meaning that when products are completed they can be recycled. 
um, meaning that the way that energy is produced is is uh, is done efficiently, um, so that the things that are that are uh, outcomes or discarded from the manufacturing process can be reused in some way. So the increasingly, and it will become even more important going forward, the whole manufacturing and uh, operations processes that involve creating and uh, creating uh, products and services, distributing them. Um, is is has wants to have as the minimum footprint, meaning there's the least amount of uh, of waste associated with it, and the most the, the environment would tend to be uh, look as close to it as it, as it started uh, whenever the process is finished. In other words, something that is green, if you will. And more and more companies take advantage of this in their advertising and in how they do manufacturing, and just taking companies and moving them from the direction of where they used to. Uh, oftentimes would cause um, problems in the towns and things, uh, uh, pollution or whatever, um, environmental damage in the places they were at, and instead make them so that they are good corporate citizens, if you will. And those are the sorts of things that are increasingly becoming important. Uh, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.